Welcome to Port Coburn. Located off the north shores of Lake Erie, there's a community rich with marine heritage, ample beachfront, and vibrant culture. And nothing sums up Niagara's southern coast better than Break Wall Brewing Company. Located in the heart of downtown, Break Wall brings Port Coburn together through their diligently crafted beers and hella good grub using locally sourced ingredients. Prepare to pull up a bar stool and feel at home. This is Tales from the Ale Trail, Break Wall Brewing Company. Okay, you guys have made me incredibly self-conscious about wearing this shirt today. I thought wearing a brewery shirt to a brewery would be acceptable and cool, but... And normally it would be if we are just going as friends, but we're filming a show here. I just think it's maybe a little bit tacky. I don't know. What do you think? Quite frankly, I think you both dress horribly. It's embarrassing. You're more embarrassing. I'm Fred Davies, president of the Breakwell Brewing Company, and I'm here with my son. My name's Conrad Davies, and I'm the general manager of Breakwell Brewing Company. And we're here in the sunny south of Niagara. Port Colburn has this unique small town flair that people are kind of yearning for. We had the space that was empty for a while, and my wife and I came down here, and we wrote a little magic marker on the wall and said, nobody would rent this space, so we decided to make beer. People are really excited about our beers and our food and how we're kind of pushing the limits of what people expect from a restaurant in Port Coburn. Welcome to uh, Breakwell Brewing Company. I figured we start out by getting you a flight of beers. This is our brewmaster, Dean. Let's hop to it. Cheers. Cheers. I think you got everybody. I think it did. The Shrinking Mill, which if you start a mile back and drive down the road, the mill starts this big, and as you're driving forward, it shrinks to about the size of your thumb. So when we were designing it, we wanted it to have like a big hop presence up front and then kind of like slowly just fade into the background. This is easy drinking. Mm -hmm. Like I know you use the term crushable a lot, yeah. and <laughs> this is definitely dockside crushable. So this crushability, is it like a scale? Like are we like one to 10, one to six? I like... do like a high, low, medium. Okay, high, low, medium. Yeah, this is high on the crushability is... index, okay. whereas right. your barley wine's probably on the low end of right. the crushability index. Yeah. yeah. We also wanted to honor some of the names of beers that were here in the past in the 1800s. So Jacob North, 1855 Pale Ale, which Conrad, you dug that up. I went over to the Port Colborne archives and I heard there was some recipe laying around from an old brewery there. And there was two recipes there and we've recreated one of them. The next beer we have for you is our 1855 Pale Ale that is inspired by a recipe from the Jacob North Brewing Company. So cheers to Jacob North. It takes questions. a while, eh? <laughs> it's like, I just want to try the beer. I really like that. Yeah. We actually got a malt called Chevalier, and that's from the 1800s. It's a seed bank malt. So what's a seed bank? Yeah. They basically put seeds away, and then if there's a giant catastrophe end of the world, they can take those seeds out if those plants go extinct. So it's an untouched malt from the 1800s. Huh. I was expecting like a pale ale that you'd find in North America today, but it has uh, almost like English inspired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with yeah. the sweeter malts, it's really cool. I was having stress dreams when we were designing this beer, because it was like, we didn't want it to just be a gimmick. We imagined like what would have been like if that brewer had moved forward in time and was like, this is the way I make beers, but did it on our equipment. We have great granddaughters of this man coming in and drinking the beer that their grandfather designed. And that's something really cool that we can bring to the community. So the next beer we have is our Hopkins Tomb Stout. It's an easy drinking stout with some chocolate and coffee flavor to it. It's inspired by a local tomb that kids used to go party at. It's sort of a rite of passage when you grow up. You gotta go out to Hopkins Tomb, knock three times, and run around 11 times, or some demon is gonna get you. Let's see if you've mastered the dark arts. Sweet. Yeah. It's high on the crushability index. Yes, yeah, you get that chocolate right away, too. So Hopkins Tomb, tell us about it. I think Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like old mausoleum. So the story behind Hopkins Tomb is you go to the tomb and you knock on the door three times, then run around seven times, and you summon the spirit of Stephen Hopkins. But why would someone want to summon him? 
Maybe he had a secret beer recipe that they were trying to brew and make the best beer of all time. And this is it? And this is it. As a stout lover, this thing is just heavenly. Well, you like stouts? We have another stout on tap. Yeah, let's get you the Irish Dry. All right, guys, here's the Irish Dry Stout. To detours. Yes, to detours. To detours. Yeah. We didn't want to just put another clone on tap when we made it. Mm -mm. So this one has a more full body to it, mm -hmm. a little drier on the finish. This is like smoky too. Like a fine cigar or something. This is smooth, easy drinking. Oh. As like a black currant or like, it's almost like, I don't want to say raisin because I don't know what's offensive, but like that's what kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> Dried raisin, <laughs> get out. You son of a god. I mean, the biggest part of a brewery is the beer. And we wanted to bring drinkable beers that kind of highlight the local community, but we also wanted to bring something unique and we're watching customers actually grow with us as we create new beers and, and get more adventurous. Their palates are growing with us. All right, so the next beer we have for you is our Griffin Brute IPA, named after the Griffin Canadian Coast Guard ship that actually breaks up ice in order to keep the canal open in this spring season. Funny story, my friend is actually a Coast Guard captain, mm. and he's on the Griffin. Oh, that's really yeah. interesting. Well, the funny stories. Yes. <laughs> oh, you spilt a bit there, Chris. I did, it's unfortunate. Ooh, oh. that's really good. Yeah, so I'm not gonna describe anything about this beer. I wanna hear what you guys think about this beer. <laughs> I think for 7% and it being high on the crushability, it is a very dangerous beer. It's very fruity. It has like a smooth finish to it. It's sparkling, like champagne. But it champagne. doesn't... Champagne. Champagnon. That's a mushroom in French. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it doesn't taste like a mushroom. <laughs> it's got the grapefruit notes when you smell it. Yeah. The flavor is totally different. Yeah. Like, it's cool. You know, for a style that doesn't really have any guidelines yet, and people are kind of experimenting with it, I think it was important to keep the bitterness low for balance and to keep the fruitiness more subtle, more of an effervescent feel to it. You guys like this IP, but have you tried our 9 o'clock whistle? I can definitely get you a sample if you want one. Does everyone want a sample? I'll get a sample. Yep. Oh, oh, and uh, get maple lager, too. Maple lager as well? Okay. Ooh, maple lager. Maple. In the 9 o'clock whistle, uh, which was the very first beer we named, is an actual curfew whistle that started during World War II. Here, you got your butt home when the nine o'clock whistle blew. After the war, it just continued going, and it died one night in 1979, never to be heard again. I know you guys are only in town for a short time, so I wanted to make sure you had a good experience while you're here. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. 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 Oh, well, I'm gonna go maple first. That's really nice, too. Oh, it's so good. This has a lot more full body. It's higher bitterness, and it has a little bit more tropical fruit kind of characteristic mm. to it. This one is more what you'd expect in an IPA, where the brute, you could tell, is like a new style where you can kind of put your own flavor on it. If I'm in the mood for something a little more punchy, then you can go for that. If you want something a little more sophisticated and refined, you, you go for your brute, right? So one of the things that we really try to focus on in our brewing process is our water chemistry. And in this beer, we increased the gypsum level in the beer. And in the Hopkins tomb, we actually increased the chloride um, level in the beer. We can essentially create any water profile that we want to determine what we want in that beer. I love that, because every beer is typically the yeah. same four ingredients. Mm -hmm. And here you guys are going with ancient malts, and you're also working on the water chemistry to really bring forth the beers that you know you want. Mm -hmm. Just realize if I was home brewing, I'd probably just use tap water. Yeah, I'd be like, shh, there's my water. There it is, <laughs> right? Medium crushability. Maple lager? This is uh, another member of our heritage series, like the 1855 Pale Ale. And this uh, contains Niagara maple syrup and is easy drinking, crisp, clean. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Wow. That is smooth and sweet. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's nice. And it's wow. not too sweet. You get the maple more at the aftertaste. Yeah, absolutely. But you get that sweetness up front. Yeah, it's vibrant, yeah. it's lively, mm -hmm. it's delicious. You know what, the maple is the perfect one to end on because it's like a dessert. Yeah. But but you haven't tried the Breakwall Blonde yet. You have to try the Breakwall Blonde. You have burgers too, right? How about we try the Breakwall Blonde with the burger? We have burgers. I can I can get you a burger, absolutely. That would be helpful. What are you doing? If all these beers are good on their own, what are they like together? So it's swamp butter beer. Swamp beer? Yeah. <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> And 
You know what? It's really not that. It's, it's, I actually want to try it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually surprisingly uh, okay. Do <laughs> you? I feel like I've. I feel like I've had that beer somewhere before. <laughs> it's like a nut brown almost, almost. <laughs> it's like an American amber ale. I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but this is actually yeah. really good. It's like, this is my <laughs> pick of the day. Burgers are not your standard run-of-the-mill burgers. We have a local butcher that gives us all our ground beef for our burgers, so I walk down the street, pick it up, and I walk back over and we press it into our patties. It's really awesome to be able to support another local business while also giving our customers the freshest, highest quality beef. All right, guys, we got your burgers here. Wow, that is huge. Yeah, thank you. So here we have our Beyond Meat burger with two deep fried matzo patties, marinara sauce and roasted red peppers. Here we have our old fashioned cheeseburger with double smoked bacon and 100% prime rib patty. And here we have our burger feature, which is the same prime rib patty, spicy tortilla chips, blue cheese, and house buffalo sauce. You guys enjoy. Chris, now you placed the healthy order as you thought, <laughs> but I imagine that yours has the most calories. Might not be the healthiest option of the That thing. looks amazing. How do I do this? I, I, I don't know. You this just is gotta buckle down and do it, buddy. Mm. Oh. These are interesting sounds you're making. <laughs> It's that good. This is that good. Oh my goodness. I can't even really tell that this is a vegetarian burger. Something like this is just as tasty as many of the beef burgers on, on the menu. It is absolutely wonderful. Oh my goodness. That thing tastes like um like a meatball sub. It does. Good call. You understand, I'm breaking mm -hmm. lifelong habits. I normally go all my fries and then I dabble it's to the burger. Deal. This is like a prime rib burger you're about to mow down on here. It's fresh, it's flavorful, it's juicy, like man. That's exceptional. Wow. All right, Drew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see bacon, I see cheese, I see burger. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> when you have premium beef, you don't need to drown it in sauce. And there's a franchise that I can't stand going to because that's all it is. It's 45 different burgers which are really just drowning the fact that they have overcooked crappy beef. Well, so much of it is, has to do with the patty, right? Yeah. When you're ordering a burger, if the patty's not good, like I don't care what toppings are on it. You're taking something regular, but you're making it so much better. That is exceptional. Look at that. Hey guys, how are your burgers? Absolutely amazing. Awesome. Well, now that your food is done, I want to treat you guys like locals and have you compete in a stein holding competition. Grab a stein of your favorite brew and prepare for battle. Battle. My beer pick of the day is the Irish Dry Stout. It tastes like you're sitting next to a roaring fire in a sophisticated leather chair. My pick of the day is the 9 o'clock whistle IPA. It's good. My pick of the show, the 1855. One thing I love more than a good tasting beer is a story behind it. And this throwback to the original Port Coburn Brewery tastes amazing and has a wonderful story. All right, boys, the name of the game is Stein Holding Competition. Prepare for Armageddon, boys. You're going down. Oh, good. Christy's back. Hold the beer out in front of you for as long as you can until your opponents put their arm down. Your arm must be straight at all times and must have a full grip on the beer. Any questions? Do beers with more robust flavor carry more weight? No, they do not. What do I get when I win? You get to drink a beer. That's, that's good. Yeah, I'll take that. Let's do this. No touching of the hair or face. Signs up, boys. Frankenstein. Oh gosh, that's terrible. I'm gonna be playing you guys the swan song on my Steinway piano. <laughs> Glad you specified there. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know it's a piano, Nick. Do you guys have goosebumps? Cause I'm R.L. Stein. You get it? Yeah. R.L. Stein, yeah. That's a great one, Chris. Thanks. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. 
Got a little shaky there, Christy. You okay, Christy Boo? Don't lose it, Chris. <laughs> Talk a big game. Breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> Tighten up, close it up together. There we are. I just want you to know that whoever goes down, at least Christy didn't win. Mm. I respect you as a person. Shut up. You've put up a good fight. Shut up. But I think it's time for you to put your beer down, Nick. Just let it go, buddy. Just like Anna and Elsa. Oh. The victor! All right, now you must cheers to the victor. I have to use my other hand now. <laughs> the first thing that people can expect to come here is our local hospitality. We're going to find out where you're from, your story, and kind of introduce to you what Port Corbin's all about. Cheers! It's not only about the beer, but it's also about how awesome it is to be surrounded by good people. Down the hatch. Red meat. Tales from the Ale Trail is created by Mitchell Riley Pictures and is brought to you by AE Media Inc. Web Design and Print Studio. Penn Financial Credit Union, Treshack Enterprises, Port Colburn, Taste the Good Life, Joel Hannigan Photography, William Joseph Photography, and Bell 5TV1.